going on what's hot what's hip what's happening what's shaking on your thursday night people want to know the derivation of my family name i i don't even i hi uh so you know uh, <laughs> hey, tonight I'm going to tell you about the fastest canceled TV shows of all time. Now you see them, now you don't. What shows were so bad that they either were never aired or one episode and see ya. Uh, but before we get to that, if you could like, share, and subscribe, I would be eternally grateful. And so would all of my ancestors, some of whom may be from... England or Wales. Some say France, but I'm pretty sure it's England and Wales. My specific, most direct lineage is English and Welsh. There's rumors of French in there way back, but I, I don't know. I never see anything on it. I didn't, didn't think it mattered till just now. Um, and also, you can go to the Tom Gully show where... We've never really discussed nationality, uh, and there's 270 podcasts regardless of my nationality, and uh, there's bound to be one of them that excites you. 
Then, of course, you can also go to our merchandise store where you can get a shirt like this one. Hold on. Like this one here. Or some mugs like these mugs here. Or a bunch of other stuff. And, and a few of you made extremely generous donations last night. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It was... It was stunning. It was unexpected. I don't want to mention you by name because it's on PayPal. And I, I, I docs, docs, I don't know. Uh, if you want to be thanked, though, let me know and I'll thank you publicly. Uh, if you don't, then, but just know that I know and I appreciate it and I appreciate you. Uh, let's see here. Um, anything else? Patreon, whatever. Let's give some people some time to get in here. Jerry says, I'm habitually trying to figure out how names relate to people's identity from lifetime repetition. Reptition. I don't know what that means either. Hugh is here, says, oh, hey, Tom. Oh, hey, Hugh G. Reaction. Re I didn't pronounce that right, but if I do, they'll shut the place down. Jerry says, sure, I could look it up. Just what I was thinking. Uh, I believe Newport is French. I don't know about that. Okay, so I was close. Yeah, it's easy to say that now, Jerry. Jerry, I noticed from time to time that you wrote the, the, the screenplay to something or you invented something or, or you're right out front on something and you can't look up somebody's surname. That's crazy. Uh, minor English, maybe some Irish. Who cares? <laughs> exactly. Uh, mine's Irish, a bit a bit German. The name Lahane, not French, but I internalized as the hand. I great the hand. Right, okay, man, whatever. Uh, hello, Tom and Chat says Karen Garvey. Hello, Karen Garvey. It's always so good to see you here. Uh, SG says uh, New York New Year's Eve special made it to two plays of my. I had you know. Um, as of right this minute, and I'll check it later throughout the show, they haven't updated from yesterday, so we're still at 2,698. Uh, I just looked a minute or two ago. Hey, Karen. Hey, SG. Hey, everybody. Oh, boy. Got about another minute. There's Aku Mugen. You, you generous fella, you. Nice to see you, Aku. Jerry says, not whole screenplays, but yes, many shows, movies, classic rock. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Randy Ramos, the chef, is in the house. How are you? Let me just check something out here. Uh, that's, that's not him. That's not him. My friend's a big chef, former school bus driver. No, there's not a Jerry with an eye that I'm seeing anywhere here. Well, there's, there's, a, there's one for YouTube. I'll check into it here. I'll check into it. I don't see any wiki pages popping up. So, well, Jerry, you've got 19 subscribers to your, your YouTube channel. So, um, I yeah, we're just so happy to have you here, Jerry, with all of your experiences and helping me out with my family tree. I can tell you this, I'm a direct descendant of John Gully, who's heavyweight boxing champion of the world back in the bare knuckle days. That I can tell you. Does that help you? Does that help you? No need to thank me for PayPal, Tom. <laughs> thank you, Terry. I, I do. I thank you very much. I mean, and, and I thank you for just being here and lending so much to our little chat room and stuff. Uh, Jerry says that was that uh, the I was a sacrifice. It's Jerry Jeremiah Lahane the third. Okay, Jerry. Still trying to process the Mark Cuban revelation. No, he's not a Cuban, and he's also not a sandwich. He did not invent the sandwich. Same here, Terry. SG, thank you as well. I, I'm a little, because it's PayPal, I'm a little reticent to just spew it out there because I don't know if people want it out there. But 
those two gentlemen and Ronald Bateman all made very, very generous donations last night. And I, man, I so appreciate it. We know you have many choices in airline, and we thank you for flying Tom Gully show. Design Mars Rovers, 1987. Okay, man. Whatever. Uh, Akumugan, I found out a few years back, there's a family castle in Ireland and Scotland still standing. Awesome. Uh, I'm not in the famous Ancestors League. It sounds to me like you're in the famous yourself league. Uh, let me see here. This uh, ancestor of mine, before we get to the fastest TV show cancellations ever, his name is spelled without the E, but he's still our direct descendant. Uh, he's a really interesting guy. Okay, he's uh, born in uh, 1783, lived till 16, sorry, 1863, which would have made him 80 years old. Almost. It was, seven, it was an English champion prize fighter who became a racehorse owner and, from 1832 to 1837, a member of parliament. Um, so, you know. He was the son of an innkeeper who became a butcher shortly after John's birth. He worked for his father and inherited the business on his father's death. In 1805, the business failed, and as a result... John Gully was imprisoned for debt. They did that back then. Well, Gully was visited in prison by a friend, Hen Pierce, a well-known price fighter who is nicknamed the Game Chicken because of his first name, Hen, in bare-knuckle boxing circles. An informal match was arranged between them, which took place in prison, and as a result, because of the betting on that match, Gully's debts were settled. And then he was again later matched against Pierce in a fight that was watched by the Duke of Clarence, later William IV of the United Kingdom, and numerous other spectators. After fighting 28 rounds, taking an hour and 17 minutes, Gully was beaten. In 1807, two years later though, he twice fought Bob Gregson, the Lancashire giant, for 200 guineas a side, winning on both occasions. And uh, he said, uh, the, the famous prize fighting reporter of the period, Pierce Egan, uh, said, Gregson's strength was manifest to his opponent, who endeavored to ward off its potent effects by his thorough knowledge of the science. And Gully put in another dreadful facer, which made the claret, the blood, fly in all directions when Gregson fell. And that's how he became the heavyweight champion. I think it was when uh, Gregson uh, abandoned uh, boxing. He was named the champion. So he became the landlord of a plue tavern in London. He retired from the ring in 1808 and took to horse racing. And he lost 40,000 pounds by backing his horse in the St. Ledger Stakes. And then he made 85,000 by winning the Derby and the St. Ledger. And uh, went on to a whole bunch of other horse racing wins and money. And uh, having bought Ackworth Park near Pontefract, he became a member of parliament for the Pontefract constituency in December of 1832. He was elected to his first post-reform uh, parliament. In 1862, he purchased the Wingate Grange estate and collectories and a uh, street in Wingate, County Durham is named after him. So, died at age 79. Uh, but this is another interesting thing about him. He was married twice and had 12 children by each wife. He had 24 children. Uh, his son was engineer and cricketer, William Pedley. <laughs> That's his grandson. <clears throat> his his daughter married Thomas Pedley. And then in fiction, Gully is a real-life character in Royal Flash, one of George MacDonald Fraser's The Flashman Papers series of books. He was played by Henry Cooper in the 1975 version of the film. Well, yes, that's my ancestor. Thanks for asking, Jerry. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Terry says Tom was a descendant of Gully-verse travels. Yes. Yes. 
is. Tell me, is a descendant. Joker's here. Says, hello, everybody. Hello, Joker. Uh, what's up, Joker? Terry Nee says, did Jerry Lehane write that? I'm sure he did. He says, not me, but I'm sure it's a pen name. Some kind. Hello, Aku. Lyndon says, hey, all. Good day. Good day to you, sir. And to you, sir. And to the rest of you, sir. And to me, sir. And maybe I should open my thing. That's probably about time to open my thing, you know? Okay, now, I have to apologize in advance. I normally have lots and lots of pictures of these shows. But these shows were canceled so fast that there ain't no pictures of a lot of them. <laughs> there's, there's some, um, there's some like, uh, uh, episodes. Some of them have episodes on YouTube, but I'm not showing those again. By the way, I did get a, it wasn't a copyright strike. It was just the notification of copyright for We Are The World. Now, We Are The World actually allows for the playing of, I didn't even dispute it on the grounds of, of, uh, fair use there's really no need to because it didn't change anything in my video um so you know it wasn't any big deal but I'm, I'm not playing that game again i don't know how people can do these reaction videos with you know showing most of a movie here let me see if um they've updated our uh hours yet on uh youtube studio Really cranks me that that's not updated on a more regular basis. No, nope, still at twenty six ninety eight. Uh, might as well check something else while I'm here. How's everybody's bracket doing? Geez, I hope your bracket is doing well. I I hate it if your bracket was not the way you want your bracket. I love the brackets because. People that don't even know anything about, they just go ahead and they fill a bracket out. I like the colors. I like the mascot for this team. And that's the secretary in the office who, who wins the whole thing, you know, and has absolutely no... Anyway, uh, let me tell you about the most fastest, the most fastest, the fastest canceled TV shows of all time. Now, all of these shows I'm going to tell you about were canceled after, and I could have done a bunch of them that were canceled before even airing one episode, but I thought that's really not fair because there's a lot of pilots and things that they make that they don't ever show. So these are shows that they showed at one time and people went, mm, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the first one I'll tell you about, and there are earlier examples, and I will put up pictures as soon as I have some. I might as well put up the first picture now because you can at least look at it because um, there aren't many. Some of them I've just got title cards for. Uh, it was called Who's Who's, and it was Who's, W-H-O apostrophe S, Who's, W-H-O-S-E, and that was June 25th of 1951. And it was a pan pan <laughs> rented lips. It was a panel quiz show hosted by Phil Baker that aired on CBS where they had four celebrity panelists. I'm going to tell you the names of the celebrity panelists. And even though I remotely know who these people are, I wouldn't call them celebrities. Uh, Robin Chandler, Basil Davenport, Art Ford, and em Emily Kimbrough. Uh, they tried to determine which of the three male contestants was married to which of the three female contestants. And this show replaced the Goldbergs, which was a very popular kind of dramedy show. Um, and that show ended when its creator, Gertrude Berg, refused to fire the blacklisted actor Philip Loeb. Well, anyway, while one source has classified this show as television pilot, uh, this was a series that was dropped by its sponsor, General Foods, after just one airing. They said, no, thank you. Now, this next one is kind of interesting. It was February 5th of 1969, and this show is called Turn On. And Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In was a huge, huge hit. So ABC decided to do their version. It was a racier sort of version of Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, 
And the show alarmed broadcast officials and sponsors who immediately saw this as offensive because of its very strong sexual and political humor. At least one station, WEWS-TV in Cleveland, Ohio, made it known that their cancellation of the turn on was going to be immediately. Um, there's an urban lesson, uh, legend that they pulled it after the first commercial break. That's not true. Um, but when WEWS, like right after the show aired, said, we're not showing this again, a whole bunch of stations on the West Coast delay, because, you know, shows play at a certain time for the East Coast and then a certain time for the West Coast, um, they refused to air it at all. <laughs> so this one station out East said, nah, nah, not having any more of that. And a whole bunch of them in the West said, we're not going to air it at all. And so ABC canceled the show before airing another episode. This next one is September 30th of 1990. <sighs> and I, I didn't include any British ones, but this one, because it is significant. And it's called... I can't believe they even did this. It's called Heil, Honey, I'm Home. Heil. This was a comedy on the British satellite channel Galaxy that spoofed American sitcoms of the 50s and 60s. It's a sitcom with Adolf Hitler and Ava Braun who live in matrimonial bliss until they become neighbors to a Jewish couple. Series was canceled not only due to the controversy, uh, but British satellite broadcasting's merger with Sky. Seven other episodes that were filmed were not aired. It was canceled after one episode. Those of you who are familiar with TV shows of the 80s and 90s and, and after may be familiar with the name Stephen Bochco, who had giant, giant hits. Uh, Hill Street Blues, L.A. Law, Doogie Howser, and NYPD Blue. Well, he produced a sitcom about a vice squad unit of the NYPD, and it was called Public Morals. And the cast included Bill Brocktrup, who reprised his role as John Irvin that he had played on NYPD Blue. They produced 13 episodes, and the pilot was going to air first, but a whole bunch of affiliates said, we're not showing this. So CBS then decided to air a different episode from the 13 that they'd produced. And they aired one, and that was it. And Brock Trupp and his character, John Irwin, returned to NYPD Blue. And Public Morals was heard of no more. Uh, Lawless, 1997, in March of that year, Fox action series starring former American football star Brian Bosworth as a private investigator. One episode, that was it. Dot Comedy, December 8th, 2000, an ABC series featuring an early attempt to translate humorous material from the internet to a mass TV audience, didn't go over in 2000. Uh, a show in 2005 called The Will, okay? It was a CBS reality show in which family members and friends competed to be named beneficiary of a will. And uh, eventually, much, much later, years, years later, it was aired in, in its entirety on the Fox reality channel. But when it premiered uh, in January of 2005, one episode and done. Now, this next one you see a photo of right now, and uh, this was called Emily's Reasons Why Not, January 9th, 2006, and it was an ABC sitcom starring Heather Graham, a very popular actress. You remember her from Drugstore Cowboy. Uh, you remember her from... Um, Oh, what was she was Roller Girl in Boogie Nights, and she was also in one of the Austin Powers films. Well, uh, you'd think this would have been a smash hit, but it wasn't. She played a career single woman, unlucky in love, who employs a list making system to help her determine when it is time to give up and move on. The series was canceled. The next day by ABC programming chief Steve McPherson when he decided it was not going to get better and we need a quick change. 
It uh, is reported that ABC executives have had committed to this show without ever seeing the pilot. Um, so there, uh, yeah. Secret Talents of the Stars, April 8th, 2008, CBS reality talent show where celebrities competed by participating in talents that differed from their profession. Although the show is supposed to have a seven week tournament style structure with home viewer voting, uh, the series was pulled after its debut for very low ratings. And for those of you interested, uh, Clint Black was gonna perform comedy Danny Bonaducci was going to uh, do unicycle tricks with members of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Sasha Cohen, the Olympic figure skater, was going to do acrobats. Ric Flair, woo! Uh, he was going to do salsa dancing. Joe Frazier, the legendary heavyweight boxer, was going to sing R&B. Roy Jones Jr., also a professional boxer, was going to rap. Marla Maples, ex-wife of Donald Trump, was going to do a gymnastics routine. Cindy Margolis, a famous uh, sort of pinup model, was going to perform magic. Uh, Joe D. Messina, the country music songwriter, was performing hip-hop and step dancing. Sheila E., the drummer, was going to do juggling. Ben Stein from Ben Stein's Money was going to dance the Jitterbug. George Takei from Star Trek was going to sing country music. And Malcolm Jamal Warner from The Cosby Show was performing an original song on bass guitar. How could that series have, have gone bad? I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's a mystery. This next one was called 1,000 Ways to Lie. And it was Spike's spinoff to the show, 1,000 Ways to Die, and it was immediately canceled after the first episode due to negative reviews and poor ratings. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, they had produced 74 episodes of this, and uh, they just burned them off. They kept them in a vault, and then some years later, when cable needed lots of uh, content, they finally showed them, but it was canceled for broadcast after one episode. This next one, The Osbournes Reloaded. We all remember how popular this show, The Osbournes, was. You know, that was a huge hit. Well, it, this was a variety show. <laughs> it wasn't watching Ozzy bumble about the house and Sharon ask him embarrassing questions and Jack doing crazy things and Kelly being controversial. No, 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 no. It was a variety show. And uh, they had produced at this point, and they were in production, uh, five other episodes, but several Fox affiliates, in, including the entire Raycom and local TV LLC station chains, either uh, put something else on during that slot or put it on like at three in the morning or not at all. So it didn't do very well at all. Breaking Boston in March of 2014. It was a reality show produced by Mark Wahlberg for A&E about four young women working to change their lives in Boston. Seven episodes were uh, later on made available for Hulu, but by the first airing, um, no. They, they chose not to have it on anymore. Oh, let's see here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Beware of Dog, uh, which was an animal planet show. <laughs> uh, these shows are so bad. How did they get on the air? Uh, two episodes were put back to back for the first Day, the, the, the rest of the shows I'm going to tell you about technically had two airings, but that's because the, the first two shows were put back to back on their debut. And um, the show featured Look Who's Talking style observations of a stray dog named Jack, who was adopted by a suburban family. <laughs> 
Oh man, this next show is called Anchor Woman, and uh, it's equally bad. It is a Fox comedy reality series about Lauren Jones, a model who became a television news anchor. The show was canceled the day after it aired for the first time because of extremely low ratings. And, uh, you know, (laughs) there you go. Uh, The Bussy Bunch was a TLC reality show about the Bussies, a family that promotes local professional wrestling uh, in Texas. It was pulled following the premiere with uh, a scheduled showing the following week also uh, pulled. The Adult Swim spinoff of Frisky Dingo was called The Exticles, and uh, their back-to-back two episodes aired on November 9th, and um, Adult Swim declined to fund the production of any episodes beyond the first two. And the company that produced it immediately ceased operations on the same day (laughs) this next one you may be familiar with it's sort of a relaunch and uh i don't know why they decided to do it considering what a train wreck the first one was but it was called the hasselhoffs it was an a and e reality series starring david hasselhoff and his two daughters and was canceled after only two episodes aired the first two episodes aired back to back the same night leaving eight episodes unaired. A&E stated it planned on airing the other eight completed half-hour episodes at a later date. However, that never took place. So, um, yeah, that never, ever happened. This next one was called Videos After Dark. Uh, it's an American video clip TV series based on kind of an America's Funniest Home Videos format but with more adult tones premiered on march 12 2019 is a one-hour special with the rest of the episodes set to premiere later in the year but they never came abc never made any mention of the show after its premiere and shortly after removed the two aired episodes from its website and from hulu uh 14 episodes were filmed but only the first two aired And there you go. Uh, There's a couple of special cases that that I can talk about. One is called You're in the Picture, and it was a panel show starring Jackie Gleason where celebrities place their faces into photo stands in and and stand ins, excuse me, and attempted to guess the scene they were in. And it got such negative reviews that that Gleason used the same time slot to apologize a week after its broadcast. And uh, he says, without a doubt, the show was the biggest bomb in history that would make the H-bomb look like a two-inch salute. And so he then used the following week to revive the Jackie Gleason show as a talk show to fulfill the rest of his contract. Behind me uh, here is the who's in the picture. There you go, with Jackie Gleason. As you can see, he's in a frame. I love Jackie Gleason. I'm sorry this happened to him, but you know, at least he was cool about it. He just went, "Hey, this. Hey, I apologize. This was this was horrible. This was just absolutely horrible." Um, I think there's one other one I was going to tell you about here. Um, oh God, yeah. January third, two thousand five. Who's your daddy? It was a Fox reality series that involved an adopted woman trying to identify her biological father from amongst a group of imposters. The show attracted protests from adoptive families and adoption rights groups before airing. The episode aired as a special, not a series premiere. And so you can't really say it was a series that was canceled, but they had a whole bunch of other episodes and it was slated to be uh, a big deal. So... Um, there's a bunch that, that were placed on hiatus and never came back after one episode. <clears throat> Co-Ed Fever, that was a CBS sitcom that attempted to imitate Animal House. And so the pilot was aired as a special preview of the upcoming season, but it was canceled right after that. Um, let's see here. Is any other good stuff? Uh, some of these are just... Just, just, how could they even think about it? Uh, where was the one? Uh, anyway, 
I think that's probably enough. There, there's a plenty of other series like uh, Super Train and Manimal. I mean, we could go over uh, another time the worst TV shows of all, all time, but these shows are the ones that you never heard of because they were canceled after just one airing. So there you are. Those are the fastest TV cancellations of all time, at least in this country, with the exception of one of them, which was in Britain. So there you go. Let's get to your chats very quickly. Uh, Tom Gully Show, 270 Podcasts. Uh, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. Those do me a world of good. Let's see if uh, our good friends over at um, YouTube have chosen to update my viewing hours yet today. It's weird. It takes them days sometimes. To update that no we're still stuck at that's uh the same number let me check on the website and see if that's any if it's any quicker on the website because that's where i looked yesterday and it was fabulous it was just fabulous yesterday hope you're having a wonderful thursday did i say i had an, an idea for a show yes i was getting this ready and i said did i did i tell them that tomorrow's show was gonna be about something and then completely forget about it because I kind of have an inkling that I did that. And if I did, I'll do that show tomorrow. Because tomorrow's a Friday show. <laughs> we all know how great those are. Uh, those are fabulous. Everybody loves them. And, uh, I can't get enough of those. I tell you what, this is just spectacular. Let's see here. Nope. Haven't updated on the website here. All right. Let's see here. Aku Mugen says, I'm not going to dox myself, but my lineage has six huge families. As teen, I was told we had family gatherings to know who we couldn't date. I have been told by members of my family that like for four or 500 years, there has always been a Thomas Gully in our in our family. And um, there was one when I was a child that uh, I think died about three years after I was born. So, you know, we kept the kept the home fires burning. Um, Terry Nee said, I knew you'd get notified. I did get notified. And it was wonderful. And I thank you. And you're the best. And it's just I, I needed I needed a I needed a pat on the back yesterday. Painted Circle says TSN brought me here. Hit the like, you cowards! Thank you, Painted. I, I don't think they're cowards. They're just cautious. Uh, Jokerfish says hello. People saying hi to each other. Uh, Jerry Lahane says TSN does a good job of bringing people here because Shuli knows what's good. Well, thank you, Jerry. That's that's a nice thing you say. Tyler Schollenberger's here. He's from the Quad Cities. I uh, always thought I'd see uh, more wheelchairs in the Quad Cities, but uh, has anyone ever gotten a perfect bracket before? Oh yes, it's hap it's happened. Sounds funny on this show. I don't think anything was funny. Jerry Lehane says, I fought against censorship hard by sending tapes to Jackie Jokeman Weekly, 1993 to 1995 Stern Show. Well, thank you for your service. When you have three networks and FCC interference, Karens lick their boots. Okay. She was popular as Goldie Hawn. Don't know who you're talking about, but Joker Fish says, woo. Oh, oh, you were talking about Cindy Margolis? Cindy Margolis had uh, uh, an argument with a woman by the name of Danny Ash for a long time over who was the most downloaded female. Uh, anyway, Jerry Lehane says, Kaitel and Bonaducci would have been a great comedy team as father and son. Well, that's it's interesting casting. Uh, SG says, fancy cancellation in history, the anti-Karen show. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's the quickest dump out. KB walked a chat room today. That was amazing. Aku Mugen says, good to hear Colin Quinn's tough crowd didn't make this list. Yeah, that, that was a show. I mean, I mean, there's a show right there. Shows that never should have been canceled. And that's one of them. Uh, what about the whole G4 network? Esquire bought it. 
and then didn't do anything with it, and they never brought it back. It's a shame. Jerry Lehane says, shared to Twitter. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Joker says, Rotten TV, a show with Johnny Rotten, aired a couple episodes, but didn't air the rest of the episodes from the first season. I'd have watched that. I'm a big fan of John Lydon. Julian Caesar said, there must always be a Thomas Gully in Winterfell. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so awesome. I'm a huge Game of Thrones guy. So, uh, yes, yes. Yes, it's uh, Thomas used to be, Tom, a very common name, and you don't hear it that much anymore. You know, Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, these were common names, and uh, not anymore. When I, when I was in elementary school, I think there were four, if not five, Toms in my kindergarten class. So I had to be Tom G for a long time. Uh, Akumugan says the easy way to guess if I was related is if they had two middle names. I, I know some people that got two middle names. I know some people that have no middle name. Our family did the thing where the oldest son got the dad's middle name. You guys have ever heard of that, that tradition of that? Joker says my family has kept names for generations. I'm Joker Fish the Seventh. <laughs> Uh, hey, Tom, sorry I'm late. You're not late, Pause. We go over this every time. Um, some families that, like, have no... Uh, like, the mother's maiden name is, is a middle name for one of the children, so it can at least go on past, uh, you know, the mom. Joker Fish says, Roddy Piper and Jesse Ventura had a show called Tag Team. It didn't last long. You know, I'm kind of a sucker for um, syndicated shows like Thunder in the Bay. And uh, I guess you could throw Walker, Texas Ranger in there and, and stuff like that. And syndicated shows, the the reboot of uh, Flipper. Um, I kind of like shows like that. I, I really do. I love Thunder in the Bay. When I was working in Tampa, all of the talent that I would use for TV and radio commercials would have Thunder in the Bay as a credit. And when I started working here in Dallas, all the local talent had uh, Walker, Texas Ranger as a credit um, locally. Everybody had that. So, oh, I better open up the phone lines. Oh, boy. Ew. Pokes upon me with gloves like that. Anyway, um, there was a show that our family loved as a kid. And I mean loved. We, we thought it was the, I mean, it was our whole family liked it. Because sometimes we didn't like some of the shows that our dad liked. And then, then you just kind of watched enough of them that you got into them. Uh, my dad was big on Mission Impossible. He really liked it. And I didn't like it at first. But then I started thinking, wow, oh, this is a grown-up show. And I'm watching. And then I got into it. But there was a show called Bearcats! Exclamation point. I think that was the name of it. And it was Rod Taylor. And I want to say Dennis Stone. Dennis. Anyway, it was these two guys that were in a Stutz Bearcat. It, was, it took place in the 20s or the 30s. And they drove around and had adventures. And we loved that show. And it got canceled after just like one year. We, we were devastated. That was a, that was a big show. Uh, Hugh says, me and my brother got my dad's middle name. My sister got grandpa's middle name, but we're almost hillbillies. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Delco Chris says, Walter, the MASH spinoff. And then there was After MASH. Remember that one where they all worked in the same hospital for some reason somewhere? Um, Terry Nee says, I was the youngest son. I received middle name and junior from dad. Mom says it was because they expected a girl and never considered a boy's name. Well, we had four boys in a row. And my mom said if she knew she was going to have four boys in a row, she'd have named them Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John which was problematic from a bunch of standpoints, but one of which was I have an, an older cousin named Matthew already. Uh, so, yeah. And, and all of the kids in my family, all six of us, have saints' names. Not just first, but middle as well. 
Uh, Aku Mugen says they have some great shows across the pond, and they are here on YouTube. Mock the Week and QI are my favorite, and I highly recommend. You're, you're correct about that, Aku Mugen. There's a bunch of great British shows. There's one that's more recent called Spy that's a comedy. It is so funny. It's hilarious. I think there's only three seasons of it, maybe two. And, and they don't see the need to keep things going. They make it when they have good, and then they stop, and they'll just go, that's it. That's we don't want to burn this out. Um, there's a great show called Dejanger UXB that is fabulous. There's all the shows that PBS shows, like Rising Damp and Keeping Up Appearances and all that. But there's another show that's a comedy that you don't see too often. It is, it is so absolutely coarse, and it's called Rising Damp. Who is that a good show? Jokerfish says, I dug a show from PBS called The Prisoner. It's odd. The Prisoner is incredible. If uh, The Wolf comes in here, The Wolf and I are huge fans of The Prisoner with Patrick McGowan. I recently just rewatched all of The Prisoner, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, there's another great show that's more recent, but not completely recent, uh, from the UK called New Tricks. And it's about a bunch of old detectives that take on cold cases. It's great. Delco Chris says, Aftermash, two and a half season. Walter, one singular episode. <laughs> Delco Chris, you rock. Diana Bryan says, same as my sons, if you remember, Tom. Yes, I do remember Diana. Uh, SG says, Grandpa didn't have a middle name. Mom must have felt bad for him. Stuck me with his made-up first name as my middle name. Well... That's one of the things about having a kid. You get to name it. Joker says, I got four names. First, middle, confirmation, and last. I do have a confirmation name as well. It's different than my uh, middle name. Julian Zeta says, TV used to run bad shows all the time, but for a show to actually get canceled quickly, something must have really gone wrong. You're right about that because the sponsors were in on the creation of most of those shows. They already had a sponsor for them. And, um, you know. They already paid for it. They were going to show it. Aku Mugen said Mock of the Week was canceled after Series 22. QI had Stephen Fry for years. Stephen Fry is incredible. Jerry Lane, Joker, Me Too, Prisoner, and Avengers. Oh, yes. Diana. I forget her last name. Um, the Young Ones is a fun show from the UK. And Ab Fab. Uh, nine out of 10 cats does countdown is great. I've, uh, SG, everybody tells me that that's a great show. Uh, Joker says, love the Avengers. Terry Nee says new tricks is great for a few episodes, but like all series, they become soap operas. I tend to agree with you, Terry, on that. I binge watched it and then I went back and tried to find some more, watch some more. And it was like, eh, okay. Uh, Emma, I love, by the way, I love the theme song for New Tricks, and one of the actors in it is one that sings it. Jokerfish says Emma Peel. Oh, yes, Emma Peel. Uh, Steed, John Steed, Steed. Um, Aku Mugen says, I love to see a Columbo buddy cop show with Bob Levy and Colin Quinn, where at the end of the show they have to contest to see who would be a serious cop and crazy cop. Well, Colin Quinn produced his own show called Cop Show. And go to Colin Quinn's YouTube site. You can see all of it. It is making fun of cop shows. It's hilarious. He's got guests like Jerry Seinfeld and uh, tons of biggies. And it's just uh, Jim Norton's on it, of course. And it's, it's just called Cop Show. And they're only like seven-minute episodes. It's really hilarious. They break the fourth wall a lot. It's really cool. Check out Cop Show. Diana O'Brien says, my middle name is Gene. Same as my mom's, too. There you go. Uh, SG says, The Mitzfits was great until Nathan left. Isn't that the way? Uh, SG says, RIP Sean Locke. RIP indeed. Thoughts and prayers. Delco Chris says, The Glitch is an Australian series where the dead come back to life fully restored from very recently deceased to someone that died 100 years ago. That was neat. That is pretty cool. Uh, there was a really awesome show on when I was a kid. It had Hugh O'Brien in it. It might have had other people. Burgess Meredith was in it. And uh, Lee Merriweather, I think, was also in it. And it was called Switch. And it involved a team of people 
that had all these computers and all this stuff. And there'd be a secret agent out in the field that could communicate with them through Morse code by biting on the back of his jaw. But they also had other implants in him that they could see what he saw and they could hear what he heard. So if he was talking to somebody and they said, well, tell me then, who is the person that was the Prime Minister of Blabinistan? And they would go, Prime Minister of Blabinistan is, you know, Gregor Mekonansky. And he would tell them then and stuff. And they would, they would, they would give him information that made him great. There was another really great show called The Immortal that starred Christopher Lee. And Christopher Lee was a guy whose blood chemistry, just through the way he was born, he wasn't genetic mutation, it wasn't an experiment, he, his blood would heal people super fast. He'd never been sick and he'd never gotten hurt because he was almost like the Wolverine. He could just heal. And there was this billionaire that was dying that wanted to capture him and keep him as like a a lab animal so that he could he could get all of his blood and get better. It's called the immortal. It was really good. It was really good. Um Reverend Wild Bill says you can start the show now. I'm here now. Okay, well we'll we'll just rewind it. Um let's see here. Mike Morse code. <laughs> Uh, the Rev, I wanted to wait, but you know how Tom is. <laughs> this is full steam ahead. Uh, Lyndon says, TSN turned me on to Quiet on the Set. Beware, it's on Max and addicting. Oh, now see, I'm going to have to watch it now. People saying hi to each other. Australian or Irish films or dramas are my favorites. Well made, says Diana Ray. And Canada's got a bunch of good ones. There's a great Canadian show called ENG uh, that I absolutely love. Um Reb Wild Bill says, I know, Tom won't, won't wait on no one. Well, you know, cold, bold, and won't be told. I, I'm uh, disappointed the hat hasn't been here in a while. Nancy Ramsey. Because she's, she's the one that came up with Tom Gelly is cold, bold, and won't be told. <laughs> mm. Joker Fish, by the way, the phone lines are open, 972-994-6822. Joker Fish, I, th I think I heard somebody say Manable. That was a fun show. <laughs> it was a freak of a show. Um, Red Green. Oh, Red Green's awesome. Uh, grew up loving the Red Green show. Um, love some Red Green. Yeah, everybody likes Red Green. Let me tell you another, another show from, it, it was a Canadian-American production. It was on for three seasons. It it might be my favorite TV show of all time. Uh, broadcast. And it's called Due South. And it's the story of a Canadian Mountie whose father is a super famous Mounties Mountie. And this guy is too. He's true blue. He's by the book. And his father is killed. And so he, he goes on the trail of the killers to Chicago where he gets stationed in the Canadian consulate and he's paired up with a Chicago detective who is a rule-breaking, corner-cutting, and it's, it's super awesome. It's incredible. Oh, man, who can forget SCTV? Yeah, SCTV is the best, man. Uh, SCTV's musical guests alone, which is amazing. Uh, Joker Fist says, Do oh, there's people saying hi to each other and saying hi to each other, but uh, yeah, SCTV was spectacular. And SCTV was weird because it would go away and it would come back and it'd be in a certain time zone and it'd be in and then it was and then it was syndicated with you know what I'm saying. Please like, share, and subscribe, it doesn't cost anything. Donate if you want to. PayPal.me slash Tom Gully Show. Patreon. But like, share, and subscribe. That That's the main thing. Have those Hunyucks over at YouTube updated my hours? I hate it when they do this. Like it's just some Sometimes they're Johnny on the spot. And some day, it seriously, takes them two days to get their... Uh, no, they're still stuck right there. Still stuck right there. 
Oh boy. Hi, you're on the Tom Gully show. Late guy. Look. Don't add to it. What do you mean don't add to it? Was he got a Can I Can I vent? Oh yeah, go ahead. That's what we're here for. I tell you what. There gotta be some of the no driving this son of a guns out there I've ever seen in my whole life. I tell you what, this world is eat up with stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't mean just regular, ordinary, everyday stupid. Right. I mean, this stuff, they have sat on it for a while. Yeah. They yeah. have let it grow and let it fester. I mean, I had this guy <laughs> cut right in front of me. I've got the right of way now. Yeah. Cut right in front of me, stop his truck diagonally, and tell me, look, you're driving on the road. You're supposed to watch for people. And then he started bringing my family into it, my mother no less. So I just told him about his mother and his greasy granny, you know, and he wasn't too keen on that. And he, yeah. Of course, he's telling me I don't want none, and he don't know me too well. Yeah. He knows, he, he doesn't know that, yes, I want some. <laughs> I ain't had none in a long time. <laughs> bring it on, son, bring it on. Yeah, and uh, then I get here to the hoose. Now this is after the wife, after the lovely little lady and her grandson has then hit me up, told me they want a pizza. That's what caused it all. Yeah, first place I go to, supposed to that franchise is supposed to be hot and ready after four o'clock. Yeah, how's that little guy from Rome in there? Yeah, it's gonna be thirty minutes. I said, be damned. I said this franchise is getting to be pits. You don't. You didn't even get so, your your white pizza then, did you? So anyway, so it, I didn't even want no pizza. Was the problem? I oh. had something else already planned out. But anyways, then I, so I go over to their franchise office, the other one, and I get it. I get it, and that's where the guy pulls out. That's where I had the incident where the guy asked, told me I didn't want none, and I wanted it bad, and he didn't give it to me. So I was kind of pissed off. Yeah. And then I finally get to the house here, to the house. Yeah. I'm getting here on the computer, on the beast. And I look up, and I see what time it is, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I've done missed that Tom Gullet show. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Or, is it, or was it Tim Gullet? I can't it's remember Tim. what the name of it is. But it's is it Tim, Tim. Gullet? Okay. Yeah. Tim Gullet show. And, and so I, I did it real quick. And lo and behold, he done started that damn show. On time, yeah. On, he did it on time, even. See, any yeah. other time, I'd have been coming in right at the right time, but no. no. <laughs> it, so it's been one hell of a day, let me tell you. Well, I'm sorry. And I just to... wanted to vent to somebody, and I'm glad you were here for me to vent, and all yeah. the people in the chat room, I'm sorry. I just, I had to do it. Yeah. I had to do it, you know. It's just one of those, one of those things, you know. But, uh. Yeah, Terry, he knew Bill's mother. He didn't know her too well, I tell you that. Or he, he would have added a few things with what he said if he had known her real well. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I was going to yeah, I was going to add some to it, but I was, I was done pissed off about getting right. a pizza. But anyways, but Tom, I, I just I just want to get on and be able to vent, and, you know, because if I, if I go in yonder okay. and vent, they're going to think I'm fussing and fighting, which I am. Yeah, yeah. And uh, see, yeah. Terry, he knew Bill's mother. Yeah, he didn't know my mama wouldn't have nothing to do with a person like him. But no, anyways, no, but you know, hey. Hey, what can you say? I ain't gonna go there. But uh, anyways, uh, Mister Tom, I just want to jump on and say hello. And it's Anytime. done a hell of a shows during the week. Yeah, and I've been trying to help out, putting some hours on the thing because every chance I yeah. get. Even when I went on my little trip just a few minutes ago, I was gone for four hours. So. I put the special on. I said, well, if nothing else, I can at least get four hours on there. Yeah. And that's what I was taking off the screen when I realized, oh, my God, he is actually on now. <laughs> so I had to drop it real quick and go to it because I was listening to yeah. that guy that came on that four-hour mark I was talking about the other day, that, that dumbass named Wild Bill that had yes. that alien abduction. I was going to listen to it again and laugh, but then I realized you were on, and that's when I decided, well, hell, I'll go listen to the real thing. I might even get a better laugh. But anyways, but Tom, yes, I just wanted to vent real quick. Well, thank you. Got anything you, you want to vent about real quick? No, I already did. 
You did, and I yeah. missed it, huh? Yeah, I, it wasn't much. Was it the ice cream man? No, he's coming later now because he's that that not interested in making money. Well, so. I've got a laws rocket I'm sending you. Thank you. That <laughs> way, you. next time as he's going down the road, you can put one up his exhaust pipe. Yes. You know, ice cream for and the whole neighborhood. Ice cream. Everybody will have ice cream <laughs> free. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they say, hold your bowl out, it's coming. <laughs> Boom. Boom, there it is. And free toppings, too. How about that? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, Tom, right, I'll, uh, I'll let you go. I just want right. to vent real quick and say, uh, main thing was, I just want to jump on and say hello. Just relax. Give my weekly hello to yeah, you. Yeah, some you know. pizza, yeah. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit the meds. All right. And then go out, go out and do a little bit of target practice out in the backyard at the old tree stump all right sounds good and uh and uh like uh we'll talk at you later brother all right man thank you for calling all right bye-bye all right, bye-bye i always like to hear from wild bill I'm supposed to make a noise there you go that's the noise i'm waiting on. teen town it says was a detroit bait based music variety show ran in syndication in the mid-60s it was hosted by legendary motor city dj robin seymour in its brief run, the show featured well-known acts like The Supremes with Diana Ross, The Temptations, The Miracles with Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, Martha and the Vandellas, Stevie Wonder, The Parliaments. Clips from the show are often used in Motown documentaries. Rights to surviving footage of the show are now owned by Research Video. Sounds like a cool show. I have a bunch of episodes of Hullabaloo, which are hard to find. Uh, Delco Chris says Auto Man, that Tron knockoff with Desi Arnaz Jr. and Chuck Wagner. Glenn Larson's best of the worst. I remember Auto Man. It was, it was good cheese. It was good cheese. Aku Mugen says, Tom, have you heard of the phrase Teen Town? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a pretty cool show. I don't know that I've ever seen it, but I probably have seen some of the uh, clips in uh, Motown documentaries. Terry Nee says he knew... <laughs> he, he's trying to become intimate. Um, Lucas Malagu appreciates a good shaggy dog story. Yeah. Diane O'Brien says, well, Wild Bill, you brighten our day. Respect. He does. Uh, Joker Fish says, what's this world coming to, Wild Bill? We got you, brother. Stacy Allen says, sometimes you just got to vent and let it out, Rev. Yeah, but when I do it, you go, Gully, you're coming unglued. What's up with that? Uh, SG says, Tom is the most punctual podcaster I listen to. Then again, what does that say about my taste? Well, not much, but I am, if anything, on time. I mean, I, I think it's too much to ask for people to have to watch this show and wait to have to, you shouldn't have to wait for this level of entertainment uh <laughs> did bill go to eastern asia university then he can talk all he wants you're darn right uh do it big wild bill ultraman ultraman was syndicated it was pretty bad uh let's see here Costello, Ronnie, Christina says, hi. Hey, uh, Christina Costello, thank you for that uh, Facebook message you sent me. It was very nice. It says, Stacy, because you're a bit of a chronic whiner, Gully, let's face it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we handing out unsolicited opinions? Because you're kind of a know-it-all. Let's face it. But you're, but you're not really. Uh, the Red Wild Bill says with his, uh, you know. Uh, Terry Nee says, there goes Tom again. Glue failed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. I talk about what I want. It, after all, is my show. Now, there are people out there in the world that are too, uh, what's the word, scared? There's other words that aren't as complimentary that, that I could say. Uh, to be on a show or have a show. But when you say that someone's a whiner, isn't that whining? Just kind of asking. Uh, not a lot of positive coming out of that. You know what I'm saying? <clears> hmm, <throat> okay, Gully. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I meant it. Well, it was very positive and supportive. Let's see, what did we learn tonight? Well, we learned that you really, you really, uh, oh, 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 we're stating a fact. Okay, do you know what a fact is, don't you? I don't think you do. 
A fact is water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a fact. What you just typed was an opinion. When you say someone's a chronic whiner, that's also an opinion that you are not medically qualified to make. See where I'm going with this? You really want to get into the, you don't want to get in. The verbal sparring with me will not end up well for you. Just will not. And that's me being nice, not whining at all. Uh, what's shaking in my world? Nothing. What do we learn tonight? We learn some people don't know the difference between a fact and their opinion. Now, they think so much of their opinion that they treat it as fact. But that's not what a fact is. See, my everyday job, I live in a world of facts. I can't deviate from them. I can't get them wrong. Other people, conspiracies, you name it, that's fact to them. Yeah, whatever. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Stacy knows. I'm sure she does. The fact is that you whine a lot. Where's your facts? That's an opinion. Facts have statistics attached to them numerical things. Now, what you can do is you can go back through all of my shows and for every single statement that I make, you can, you can classify some as whining, you can classify some as not whining, and then you can come up with a percentage, then you might have a fact. But till then, it's just kind of your pig-headed, self-absorbed opinion. That's all that is. Uh, fact, Tom is certified stone green. That is a fact. I am certified stone green by not even a show. That is a factual statement. Thank you, Wild Bill. Hey, exactly. You can't. You know what? Why don't I help you with that? Would you like me to help you with that? I'd love to help you with that. I would love to help you with that. There you go. Hey, don't have to worry about it anymore. Ever again. It's okay. There you go. One, um, Frankengully in four, four, yeah, that is true. Water freezes at 30 degrees is a standard atmosphere. Let's be specific. Exactly, Delco Chris. Exactly. Gullerinos. Uh, I learned that my tablet at home still plays Tom Gully show with the screen off while I'm in the drugstore. Well, there you go. Stacy, he's such a diva. I kind of am. That, that could be factual, but it, I don't know. I'd have to look into it. Uh, the facts are testable. They are testable. Mark Cuban is not a Cuban. That's a fact. There you go. You know, it, I, really, I, really, I really don't do a show to put up with other people's crap. Sorry. <laughs> Tell brother. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you have to save people from themselves. You do. You do. In fact, Tun is a diva. <laughs> See, free show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Free show. But, you know, I'm, I'm at an age and I'm at a point where I'm tired of pretending other people are correct when they're not. And if I have to point them out, then that's fine. Um, fact, I'm on my second glass of knob Greek. Sorry, Taiwanese and fat finger. It's okay. But, you know, that's just, that's just the way it rolls. I, I just, I get, I grow weary with it. I do. It makes me weary. It makes me very, let's see if I can check this thing one last time. Um, it really does make me weary. Oh. Let me see here. Noon. Uh, let's see here. Oh, sorry. Somebody's asking me to do something that's fact based. Whoops a daisy. Uh, yes. I am. I will. Uh, with TSN. There's another TSN in the world, by the way, till um, uh, 
sorry, folks. This is uh, late breaking news uh, work stuff. Uh, I God, I hate I hate texting. Uh, let's see here. And you know, here's another thing. People like me that were sort of brought up in old school radio talk, you just you just don't. You just don't play chicken with the host of a show. Jay Atkins. Hey, brother. Jay Atkins has got himself a little radio show and a network over in the UK. Nice to see you. Reverend Wild Bill, y'all could be like me. Tom lets slide with nothing. Uh, Tom lets me slide with nothing, and I love it. Keeps me on the straight and narrow. Just the facts, man. I feel your pain, Bill. Uh, Delco Chris says, um, um, yeah, I could have done that through the whole thing. doop doop doo Stacy was just lightheartedly teasing. I, I don't think so. Uh, don't feel down, Tom. You sound calm compared to my ranting about water from air device scams and the most of the vapor where Elon pushes. Yeah. Morse code going off in the background. Breaking news. Breaking news. Uh, that's the sign of a real friend. He'll tell you when you have mustard on your face or when you're making no sense or need a slap. That's right. That's, that's right. But you just want to come in here and insult me. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh, I have an open phone line on my show. If you really want to tell me something, ring, ring. But if you just want to sit there and, you know, throw tomatoes from the back, I don't know. You clearly aren't happy here. Why don't we just make it so that you don't have to be here? That's been effective in the past. As long as I can remember. As long as I can remember. Uh, Tom, did you ever hear Bob Grant, a New York City DJ? He was third generation. Yes. Um, in fact, Howard Stern lists Bob Grant as one of his biggest influences. Remember what Bill said? I would try to insult Tom, but he has more on me than I do on him. No. I, I think we're pretty much even there, Wild Bill. <laughs> I think we're pretty much even. At any rate... Uh, I think that's about the goodest place of any to stop. And I can, I can, uh, you know, go do other things. I remember saying a bunch of shows that I loved. And I went through the entire history of, of one of my ancestors. I don't recall whining about his loss to Hen Pierce while he was in prison. Or the one after prison that he lost. I didn't, you know. Just fine. Terry Me has got, I don't know what that is in emoji talk. Um, hey, Tom. Hello, Steffi Lindley. Nice to see you. Glad I could catch the end. Great, as always, peace. Thank you. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. I guess uh, with all that being said, the only thing left to say is, for most of you, <laughs> till next time, we'll see you next time.